my payoff equal to? Okay. So let's consider the random variable x. Okay. X is equal to either my so my payoff, my net gain is either thirty thousand, right? Thirty thousand. This happens with probability what? One third. Okay, if the um, die comes up one or two. And my net payoff is negative A because I lose A units of money, okay, with probability two thirds. Okay, so this is the setup. Do you understand this random variable? It's a discrete random variable. It takes two possible values. Okay, now let's put this um, on a graph. Let's um, plot the PMF of the random variable x. Okay, PX of x. What was your name, please? Yes. Kirshat, yes, I asked you before. So Kirshat, um, how many probability masses are there on the PMF plot of x? Two probability masses. Where are they? One of them is at, let's see, one of them is at 30,000, right? Um, so let this be, this, this point is 30,000. The other one, so what is the value of the probability mass here? One third. So there's a probability mass of one third at 30,000, and there's a probability mass of two thirds at, let's see, two thirds at negative A. Okay, maybe make, make that right as well. Okay, so what are we interested in? So what happens as A is increased? Now A contributes with probably two-thirds I um, <coughs> lose A liras. So A contributes a mass of two-thirds times A. Meaning, if you want to balance this, if you want to balance these two masses around the origin zero, okay, there is a value for A at which the balance happens. And when A exceeds that value, the mass two-thirds will exert too much force, if you will. If you try, if you, Think of this as finding the center of gravity. And you want to bring the center of gravity to zero, which would correspond to the two um, probability masses being balanced. Then um, there is a value of A at which that happens. Right? What is that value? 15,000. Okay? So uh, the maximum amount amount would be 15,000. Let's think a little bit about uh, our reasoning here. With probability one-third, I expect <coughs> to make 30,000. With probability two-thirds, I expect to lose 15,000. The loss of 15,000 times two-thirds is 10,000. That just balances the expected gain, 10,000. Okay, so
So that seems to be reasonable, but still we haven't really formally defined the notion of expectation. How about alternatively, um, the game changes. Uh, they give you a total of 30,000 if you win, regardless of how much you put down, and uh, nothing if you lose. Okay. How much would you pay to play this game? What's the maximum amount that you would pay to play this game? Um, in that case, um, let y be my payoff in the second game. Um, and B be the amount I put down. <coughs> okay, so let's um, <coughs> plot the PMF of X, I'm sorry, PMF of Y, PY of Y. We, um, so my payoff is 30,000 minus B if I win. Okay, so let's put. 30,000 minus B here. The probability that I win is one third. And my payoff is negative B if I lose, which happens with probability two thirds. What is the balance point? <coughs> B equals 10,000. Okay, <coughs> now let's define expectation. <coughs> the expected value or the mean of a discrete random variable x is defined as expectation of x equals summation over all values that x can take, value x times the probability that the random variable takes that value. Okay, so value times the probability <coughs> mass of that value summed over all possible values of the random variable. Okay, so this is just like what we did here. We were taking the cent finding the center of gravity of the distribution. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do a simple example. Let's do a simple example. Consider this PMF. Pz of z, and it's equal to 3 with probability p, and 5 with probability 1 minus p. Okay, if p is 1 half, let p be 1 half, what is the expectation of z? 3 times 1 half plus 5 times 1 half. That would bring the expectation of z right into the middle, 4. Okay. If p is made 0, well then what happens? The expectation now since this value becomes unlikely, in fact, this value becomes impossible, expectation moves all the way to 5. Right? If, if P is made 1, this time the expectation moves all the way to 3. So in general, the expectation of a discrete random variable is somewhere within the um, support of that random variable. In fact, it is exactly equal to the center of gravity of the uh, PMF. Okay? This is just a definition. Okay? Just a definition. Okay, and so let's use this definition um, back here in this problem. So let's compute the following. Let x be your net earnings in the first casino problem, okay, where you put down 12,000 to play the game. Okay. Find your expected earnings. 
So I put down 12,000. So I set A, set A to 12,000. Okay. What is my net earnings? Net earnings is the expected value of X. The expected value of X is 30,000 with probability one third plus plus negative 12,000 with probability two thirds. Okay, what does this come down to? 2,000 liras. So 2,000 is the amount I expect to make as a result of this game. Note that you never really make exactly 2,000. You, you sometimes make 30,000, you sometimes lose 12,000, but the expectation of your net earnings is 2,000 liras. So in this game, you expect to make money, which is unrealistic in a uh, real life casino, okay, because if they want to survive as a business, they, expect, they should expect to make money, not the customer, okay? So now, uh, what would a realistic casino charge you to play? More than 15,000, because if, if you, okay, let's see, let's check 15,000. 15,000 we had computed instinctively as the maximum amount we would use to play um, such that we don't expect to lose money. Okay, let's compute that. The expected value of X in that case would be 30,000 times one th um, third um, plus negative 15,000 times two thirds, which is zero. So that's the break even point, okay? If you play exactly 15,000, you expect to make zero money um, and you expect to lose zero. If you, so a normal casino would charge you more than 15,000 to play, such that they expect to be uh, winning. No, the, the, um, the probability of winning, notice that the probability of winning is fixed at one third. The amount, um, the, net, the net profit you expect is reduced with A, the amount of money you put down, okay? Don't worry too much about this specific example. So those of you who kind of didn't like this example, you can focus on this example, okay? This is a discrete random variable and according to the definition of expectation, it's expected value, let's compute it. So I'll ask you, what was your name? Berna. Berna. How about I ask you, Berna? So let's compute this together. Um, look at this z over here. It's equal to 3 with probability p and 5 with probability 1 minus p. Let's find the expectation of z. Expectation of z is, hmm, z, so this is the definition. Small z times p z of small z, summed over all values of small z, script z. Okay, now there are two such values in this example, three and five. <laughs> so three times the probability p. mass at three, which is p, plus five times the probability mass at five, one minus p. So we computed the expectation to be what? Five minus two, five minus two p. 5 minus 2p is the expected value of this random variable z. 
Yeah. Any questions? Yes, please. This is little z. If you want, let's let's change this to to um, theta. How about that? Hmm? Any problem? OK, so this is expectation. <coughs> expectation is also called the first moment. Okay. It's a first order statistic of a distribution. <coughs> So let's move over to uh, the first second order statistic that we will define, which is variance. Okay. Variance is a very important quantity. Remember, when uh, we announce your exam grades, we usually announce the mean grade, which is, the ex which is just like expectations, an average grade, and we also announce the standard deviation from the mean. Standard deviation is a second order statistics, statistic okay, for a distribution, um, just like variance. <coughs> variance provides a measure of how spread out x is around its mean, around its <coughs> expectation. Okay. It's defined as the expected value of x minus expected x squared. Okay, What is this? Expected x is the mean of the random variable. x minus expected x is the difference from the mean. Okay, And when you square it, you weigh negative differences and positive differences in the same way. And then you take the expectation of this quantity. Let's visualize this a little bit. Let's visualize it on this example. Here are two PMFs with the same expectation, but they have different variances because they have different spread around their mean. So example A is the probability that x is 15 or 20 or 25 is one third. So x takes three values. Um, with uh, sa the same probabilities. Can you please pass these to the back? There are people. Okay. So let's um, plot the PMF. X is either 15 or 20 or <coughs> 25 with probability one third each. What is its expectation? Hmm? What is the expectation of x? 20, right? Expected value of x is 20. Now, let's compute its variance. Before we compute its variance, alternatively, think of this other random variable. Let's call it y, py of y. It's either 15 or 25. It's equally likely to be 15 or 25. Okay, one half, one. <coughs> and this was one third, one third, one third. What is the mean of y? Huh? Again, 20. Why? Think about the center of gravity. Okay. Equivalently, apply the definition of expectation. Okay. Now, these distributions, if we just characterize them using the mean, which is a first order characteristic, are not distinguished. 
by the mean. Okay. We would need a second order characteristic to make them distinguished. Okay? And the variance serves that purpose. Okay, let's compute the variance. Um, now, it's you no know, variance of x is defined to be the expectation of x minus expected x squared. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Last time, remember, we said if you have a random variable x, and if you consider a function of it, f of x, f of x is also a random variable. And you can compute the PMF of f of x. So in this case, let's define f of x as x minus expected x squared. Okay? It's a function. So, since it's a function of a random variable, it is a fun uh, random variable itself, we can compute the PMF of this random variable. Okay? Let's call this, let's call this Z. Okay? So, Z, what are the possible values of Z? Z is equal to uh, 15 minus 20 squared, right, with probability one-third. Do you agree? Because when x takes the value 15, z takes the value 15 minus 20 squared. And z is equal to 20 minus 20 squared with probability, again, one-third. And it's equal to 25 minus 20 squared with probability one third. So we now have the complete PMF of Z. Let's write this again. Z is equal to 5 squared. Okay. In other words, this distance squared square of that distance from the mean, 25 <coughs> with probability one-third, zero with probability one-third, and again 25 with probability one-third. Maybe we can merge it with, with this and say it's equal to 25 with probability two-thirds. Okay? So the next thing and the final step is to find the expectation of Z expectation of z is 25 times one-third plus zero times one-third. I'm sorry, 25 times two-thirds times zero times one-third, which is 50 over three. Okay, this is also the variance of the random variable x. So we computed the variance of the random variable x. Are there any questions about this? <coughs> no? Okay, so it's the next, uh, let's next compute the variance of y. Yes, please. Uh, because it's given in the problem. Oh, interesting. Wow. And uh, what do you think, uh, how, c how should we complete? With probability 99 over 100, what would it be equal to? I think that's a typo. So make that one half. I'm sorry, this is a typo. This, is, this value is supposed to be one half. But tell me a situation in which those can stay as uh, 1 over 100 and add a probability mass somewhere such that the expectation doesn't change? Huh? 
add 20. If you add, exactly, if you add the probability mass of 0 0.99 at um, the value 20, nothing changes. <coughs> of course, of course, yeah. But if you had to pick just one probability mass, it would be at 20. Okay. Um, so let's compute the variance of this. Thanks for fixing the typo. Maybe you can help us think about, <laughs> think about the um, variance of this. Do you think it's going to be less than or <coughs> more than the variance of x? <coughs> Who says more than? Why? Right, so it's sort of more collected on the edges rather than focused at the center. This is sort of more collected at the center, okay? So that's the right, that's the correct intuition. The variance of y is defined as the expectation of y minus expected y squared. Let's define g of y as <coughs> y minus expected y squared. Um, and g of y is well, 15 minus 20 squared, which is 25, with probability 1 half. And 25 minus 20 squared, which is 25, with probability 1 half. In other words, it is equal to 25 <coughs> with probability 1. Okay, so expected x minus expected y, I'm sorry, um, x, uh, y minus expected y squared is deterministically equal to 25. So its expectation is also 25. Okay, which tells us the expected <coughs> value is equal to, expected value of g of y, which is the variance of y, is equal to 25. Okay. So let's write it here. The variance of y is 25. The variance of x was, let's see, what was it? <coughs> 50 over 3. So this is consistent with our intuition. The variance of the lower uh, distribution is larger. Any questions about this? <coughs> okay, let's move on and uh, define standard deviation. Maybe that's going to make you feel it a little more. Standard deviation of x <coughs> is defined as the very um, square root of variance. So I think the phrase standard deviation explains it quite well. Deviation is how much it differs from the, the mean. Standard deviation, standard deviation is sort of like an expected deviation or a mean deviation. Okay, so it measures, uh, we, we usually denote standard deviation of x as sigma subscript x, and it is the square root of variance. We can always take the square root of variance because variance by definition is always non-negative. Okay. Now, another, um, so <coughs> this is usually simpler to interpret because it has the same units as the random variable x. For example, if the units of x 
is temperature in Fahrenheit, variance would have the units Fahrenheit squared, which may not mean a lot to you, but when you take the square root, it becomes Fahrenheit again. Okay, so it has the same units as um, the mean itself. Another way to evaluate the variance is by using the following result. Let's read this. Let x be a random variable with the PMF Px of x and g of x is a function of x. Then the expected value of g of x can be found by summing over all values that the random variable x can take, g of x, Px of x. Okay, it's sort of trivial actually and intuitive but you can prove this as exercise and a quick short proof is found in the textbook. I hope you're reading the textbook as we go along. Okay. <coughs> now here's an example showing that unless g is a linear function the expected value of g of x should not be confused by g of expected value of x. Okay? The example is about speed um, versus uh, time. But anyway, so here's the example. In the morning, uh, when I listen to Radio Otto in the car, I drive at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Okay. Otherwise, I drive at 70 kilometers per hour. Okay. I listen to Radio Otto with probability 0 0.3 on any given day. Okay. What is the average duration of my 5 kilometer trip to work? Okay. So let's, let's think a little bit about this. What is my average speed? What is my expected speed? So let's S be my speed. Is it a random variable? Yes. It's a discrete random variable. S is 50 kilometers per hour with probability what? 0 0.3. And S is equal to 70 kilometers per hour with probability 0 0.3. 7 then, because those are the only two speeds by assumption in the question. Okay, so what is my expected <coughs> speed? Expected speed 50 times 0 0.3 plus 70 times 0 0.7, 15 plus 49, 64. 64 kilometers per hour. Nice. So, duration of my s trip to work. How do I think about this? Okay. So, the duration of my speed to work is a function of my speed. What kind of function is it? Uh, let D be the duration. Duration of my trip uh, is 5 kilometers divided by my speed. Okay? So it's just a function of my... Um, it's just like this. Just like this. G of x. x is my speed. G of x is my duration. Okay? I need to find the expected value of G of x. Let's do that. <coughs> expected value of D is hmm, um, with probability so let's write it here D is equal to 5 kilometers divided by 50 kilometers per hour which is 0 0.1 hours uh, in other words 6 minutes six minutes with probability 0 0.3 okay and D is equal to 5 divided by 70 which is 
How many minutes? One over 14 <coughs> times 60 minutes with probability <coughs> 0 0.3. Okay, I'm sorry, 0 0.7. Okay, now then using, using this, using this, I can compute the average, um, I'm sorry, the mean duration of the trip, right? The mean duration of the trip is um, six minutes, six times 0 0.3 plus 60 over 14 times 0 0.7. That gives me how many minutes? 4.8 minutes. Okay, 4.8 minutes. Any problem with this? Okay, why do we do this example? We're doing this example for two purposes. Yes, please. Very good question. Okay. So we're doing this question exactly for two purposes. That's one of the purposes. One of the purposes is to show that it would not be correct to just say uh, duration is equal to uh, five kilometers over the expected speed. This is wrong. No, it doesn't. Okay? Now, okay. Now, expected value of g of x and g of expected value of x are in general different things, okay? They are only equal, so these would be equal <coughs> when g, the function g is linear, okay? When the function g, so what kind of function is this? 5 over s. So d of s is 5 over s. What kind of function is this? Is it linear? No. Is it concave? No. Is it convex? Yes. <laughs> it's a convex function. Okay, not every function has to be linear, concave, or convex, okay. Uh, but this happens to be a convex function, and in that case, g of expected x is less than, why? I mean, let's plot this, s d of s. How does it look? As s gets to zero, d of s goes to infinity, and we're only thinking about positive values of s. s goes to infinity, it goes to zero. Now, there are two possible values for the speed. Um, 50 kilometers per hour and 70 kilometers per hour. Um, this corresponds to a distance of um, six minutes, and this corresponds to a smaller duration of 60 over 40, okay? okay. Now the mean duration of the trip is the average of these values which is found to be 4.8, 4.8, okay? Now, how, uh, how about the expected S? Expected value of S, let's compute it. Oh, we already computed that, 64, 64. Let's look at this. The expected value of S is 64. 
the distance corresponding to the expected value of s is um, 5 over expected s, which is 5 over 64 kilometers per hour. It's, I already computed it, 4 point, um, let's see, you have it in your handouts. 4.68, 4.68, about 4.68, okay? This is lower than this, okay? So this is sort of extra knowledge, but it's this way when G is convex, and you can guess that when G is a concave function, it's the other way around, okay? So. G concave. Okay. So the two prob uh, points of the purposes of the example was number one, being able to compute the expectation of a function of a random variable, and number two, <coughs> noticing that the expected value of a function is not necessarily equal to the function of the expectation. Okay. <coughs> this is true when the function is linear. Why is, the f is a, why is it true when the function is linear? Because the expectation is a linear operator, and you can switch the order of these two linear operators. <coughs> okay, any questions? Let me get out of the way. The next thing is to look at some properties of expectation and variance. Okay. So, as I said, expectation is a linear operator. Expected value of A times X plus B is A times expected X plus B. Um, how can we show this using the definition of expectation? <coughs> well, expectation is a linear sum, okay? Expectation is a linear sum. Expected X is summation X times PX of X, okay? Now, instead of every, so basically let's do this as the final thing we do today. <coughs> Remember, expected value of g of x is g of small x px of x, where x is a discrete random variable. Now let g of x to be AX plus B, okay? So we can write this summation as summation over all values X, AX plus B times PX of X. And we can break this summation up into A times summation X, PX of X, plus b times summation px of x. What is this summation equal to? This is the sum <coughs> over the whole distribution, which is 1. This is, I'm sorry, this is the sum of the PMF, which is by definition equal to 1. And this is, by definition, equal to the expectation of x. So we have proved that expected ax plus b is equal to A times expected X plus B. Expectation is linear, but variance is not linear, and we'll talk about this next time.